గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ దిస్ ఈజ్ మద్రా శ్రీనివాస్ అసోసియేట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ కంప్యూటర్ సైన్స్ అండ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ సో టుడే వై ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ పవర్ఫుల్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఆఫ్ సి లాంగ్వేజ్ స్ట్రక్చర్స్ ఫస్ట్ ద స్ట్రక్చర్స్ పార్ట్ ఈస్ డివైడెడ్ ఇన్ టు టూ క్లాసెస్ అండ్ టుడే ఐఎమ్ గివింగ్ ది ఫస్ట్ క్లాస్ ఇట్ విల్ కవర్స్ ద ఇంట్రడక్షన్ and the basic programming of structure and in the second class we are going to discuss how these structures can be used with arrays and uh, how, what are the nested structures and uh, how structures are useful for complex applications that we are going to discuss in second class and for today's class the objectives are like this first we are starting with the introduction of the structures and what is its importance and then we are going to discuss the differences between arrays and structures and then we will discuss how these structures can be implemented in c programs and how they can be used for uh, solving the complex problems and then we will look at one sample program of using structures so first let us starts with the introduction of the structures friends already we discussed about the variables of primary data types such as integer variables float variables double variables long double variables character variables and all these variables of primary data types can store only one value at a time but in real time applications we will be having large volumes of data to deal with so then if you are going with the variables of primary data type so these variables are not enough to store the large amount of data because to store large amount of data we have to declare many variables large number of variables need to be declared in the program the variables itself increases the length of program excessively and moreover the program when you are writing using more number of variables the program becomes comp- complex and it becomes clumsy and it is very difficult for the user to understand the flow of data in the program so therefore fortunately c language has provided two alternatives to us to deal with the large volumes of data one is you can use arrays and other one is you can use the structures but arrays and structures even though you are having these two alternatives so both of these concepts are having their own limitations in the c program so arrays already we have discussed just here i will give the definition of arrays so that you can recollect what we have learnt in the previous classes so array already we have defined that it is a fixed size sequential collection of data items of same data type means when you are ha- having group of data items and all of them are belonging to the same data type then you can use the arrays to deal with that data suppose i will give one example if you take a class every student is having marks in different subjects you want to store the marks of each student of the class in a data structure so then you can use the arrays because all the marks are can be categorized as a integer data type and each student marks can be stored in the array because each is integer value so if you take a class of students assume that 60 students are there in the class and every student is uh, writing examination in six subjects so therefore every student is associated with this, uh, six sc- scores so 6 into 60 students of the class so total 360 integer values for storing this 360 integer values you can use with arrays and all these integer uh, values can be efficiently handled using arrays now suppose these are the same type of the data when you are having so arrays are suitable but in some applications we are going to have the group of elements group of data values of different data types means few of in a group of data group of values some values are of integer type and some values are of float type some values are character type then how do you deal with this group of items which are combination of different data types then the in c language 
to deal with such kind of data of different data types then we use structures so the structure is defined as a collection of data items of different data types so that's what a structure is defined as a collection of or group of data items of different data types where you can have heterogeneous uh, data types and arrays and structures in c language both are designed to handle a group of data items now i will give the examples where you can use the structures suppose you take some real time entities like book or student or employee or a place so every real time entity normally it is associated with few attributes suppose if you take a book as an example book is having so many attributes here i have taken few attributes for example so first the title of the book every book is associated with a title every book is having title there is no book in the world without a title so title means it is the name of the book so title will simply tells speaks about the content that is present inside that particular book so this title is uh, represented as a sequence of characters so sequence of characters means it is a title is a character data type so that is about the first attribute and second attribute is author author means the person who is writing that textbook the person who wrote that textbook so his name so he is called author so author name so again uh, name means it is again a sequence of sequence of characters sequence of character means it is also character data type means title is a character data type author is also a character data type and third attribute if you take pages so pages every textbook is having some number of pages in it so pages is also one of the attributes of associated with the book so since the pages are always whole number means it can be considered as a integer data type means in a textbook you are having 200 pages 250 pages 300 pages 320 pages like that it is always a integer value and then coming to the fourth attribute that we have considered is the price of the book so every textbook is having some price means printing cost plus the profit obtained by the shopkeeper or retailer so price price is normally expressed as real value real value means the price of the book can be 100.5 rupees or it can be uh, 250 rupees 0.75 paisa like that so it can be considered as a float data type so means when you consider these four attributes associated with a book so title is a character data type author is a character data type pages are integer data type and price of the textbook is a float data type or you can take it as a double data type means three data types are associated with the entity called book okay similarly you take other entity student a student is also having so many attributes associated with it a student is associated with a roll number normally at engineering level we call it as a hall ticket number okay so this hall ticket number is issued to the students Uh, when they join in first year and same hall ticket number is ca uh, carried by the student till he complete the course so every student is uniquely identified with his roll number so roll number normally we will take it as a integer value and then every student is associated with the name and similarly every student is also associated with marks as we discussed just now so marks is marks is a uh, integer type data type and then every student is also associated with the percentage so percentage is again real value real value means we will consider them as float or uh, double data type in c language similarly employee employee is also associated with many attributes here we have taken example of uh, employee identity number it can be taken as integer value and the name it is a character data type department with which that employee is associated in the organization so that is character data type and then salary of the employee it is a float or double data type so like this you take any entity book student employee place or some other item in a supermarket so every entity in the real world is associated with a few properties or attributes and these attributes are represented using different uh, data types in c language and all these are logically related attributes to a particular entity means title is one attribute author is one attribute pages is one attribute price is uh, one attribute or property 
and all these four properties or attributes are related to the entity called book. Similarly, you take student. Student means hall ticket number, name, marks and percentage. These are the logically related attributes to the student entity. Similarly, ID number, name, department and salary. These are the logically related attributes uh, to the entity employee. So like this, you can represent book entity using structure, student entity using structures and employee entity using structures in C language. So like these structures, like arrays, they can be used to represent a collection of elements of different data types. Okay, so arrays are used for representing the group of elements of similar data type. Structures are used for representing the group of elements of different data types. That is the difference between arrays and structures. And there are uh, few more differences are existing between arrays and structures that we are going to uh, see after a few minutes. So now I will just have discussed book entity, student entity. And here how it can be implemented using structures. Just a sample uh, structure I have given. So it is a struct book. Title of the book is character data type. And author is character data type. Pages is integer data type. And then price is float data type. And this structure definition is starting with a opening brace and it is closing with a closing brace followed by a semicolon. Okay, so this is how we are representing a structure. So now we are going to see, just now we discussed that the arrays and structures are used for dealing with the group of data items. Okay, but there are some differences between arrays and structures. So what are those differences? Just we will see now. Differences between arrays and structures. So both arrays and structures are intended to deal with the large volumes of data. Means group of data items, collection of data items. So what are the differences? So one side I am writing arrays and the other side I am writing uh, structures so that you can easily analyze it. You can easily understand the differences. So arrays already we discussed. It is a derived data types in C. Derived data types means they are the secondary data types. So they depends on primary data types. But structures are user defined data type. You know that in C language we have three types of data types. One is primary data types. Another one is secondary data types. And the third one is user defined data types. Arrays, functions, pointers comes under derived data types. And structures and enumeration or comes under user defined data types and array is a group of elements of similar data types whereas structures is a group of elements of different data types already just now we have discussed and arrays they behaves just like built-in data type like integers or float numbers in whatever way we can use them so you can use them arrays also like that Okay, but the structures since they are uh, not the uh, built-in data types, so they does not behave like uh, built-in data type because structures are user-defined data types. So you do not have the properties of built-in data type to the structures. And if you want to use arrays in our programs, simply we are declaring array and then immediately we are using the array element for manipulating the elements in the array. But structures are not we cannot use just like that okay so such as if you want to use in the programs first you have to define the format for that particular structure because it is a user defined data type a structures can be defined as per the requirements of the user and based on the application and based on the problem the way you are going to solve that problem based on that you can formulate one structure to deal with the data items and that format you must define first you must inform to the compiler first and then once it is informed to the compiler about the format of your structure then you can declare the structure variables and then you can manipulate the structure variables in the program so that we are going to see in few minutes and then other difference is arrays in most cases we declare arrays inside the function and the structures in most cases we will declare them outside the function okay so 
usually outside the function we will define but structures are usually defined before the main function and after the definition section a c program contains some uh, systematic format for writing the program first we will start with a uh, documentation section followed by linking section and then followed by definition section and then global variable section and then you will be having main function so means before main function documentation section linking section definition section global variable declaration section will be there so normally structures are defined before the main before the main means just in global variable declaration section so these structures are defined now we will discuss how to implement these structures in our programs is there any specific format is available to uh, define the structure we are going to discuss so if you wanted to use structures in c programs so then you have to follow some sequence of steps what are the sequence of steps first you have to define what is the format for your structure that should be defined and it should be uniform to the compiler and then after defining the structure then you have to declare the structure variables in the program structure variables are also called objects so these objects you have to declare and uh, structure objects we are going to use them in the program and then the next one is after declaring the structure variables then you can access the member fields of the structure and then you can initialize those member fields of the structure and the final step is then once uh, member fields of the structure are initialized then you can use the structure members in your program and perform operations this is called manipulation of structure member fields so these are the first defining the structure first and then declaring the structure variables and then accessing and initializing the structures and then manipulating the structure members same thing we have followed even for arrays and strings the only the difference here and there is so this portion is not available De defining this mm, arrays or defining the strings is not available so only last three steps are available these three steps these three steps are there for arrays and uh, strings now first we will start with this one by one step first definition of the structure so we are starting with the definition of the structure so uh, how do you start with the definition of the structure so defining the structure means already i told i told you just now that is so based on the problem we will identify how to solve that problem using structures and what are the variables we need to handle to solve that particular problem so all that uh, variables we, we are identifying and we are packing all these variables into uh, one unit and that unit we are calling it as a structure so this is structure format first we have to define it to the compiler defining the structure means informing about the format of our structure to the compiler so that is called definition of the structure defining the structure so defining the structure means informing the format of our structure to the compiler and this structure format will be changing from problem to problem because different problems are solved using different methods so based on the method you are using so we will finalize the format for the structure so structure format is not same for all problems so based on the problem we will finalize one format for a particular structure okay so means a structure definition means identifying the format for a particular structure so we are going with the first step defining the structure so defining the structure means since structure is a user defined data type so it format need to be finalized and it must be informed to the compiler so that format of the structure is called defining the structure okay so informing about the format of the structure to the compiler so it is called definition of the structure so to defam to tell about the format of the structure to the compiler so there is a specific syntax so that is to be followed so what is that specific syntax specific syntax is available in c language what is that first struct we are starting with a struct for so this is a syntax first we are starting with a struct 
So struct is a keyword. So it info it tells the compiler that whatever is following is a structure definition. So struct followed by the structure name. So what is that structure name? So you can assign some name to your structure based on the uh, problem that you are solving. You can select a particular name for, to this structure. And when you are selecting a name, so as per your wish, you can select the name to the structure. But when you are selecting the name to the structure, you have to follow the guidelines of the rules of the identifiers. So we have, ident we have uh, given different uh, rules for naming the identifiers. So those rules you have to follow to name the structure, value, uh, structure name. So here we are writing structure name. Structure name is also called tag name. And many cases it is optional, but in everywhere we are going to use this structure name. Structure name is having uh, very big importance because structure name is used afterwards to declare the structure variables. Okay, so therefore, even though structure name is optional, we mentioned here that structure name is called tag name and it is optional, even though it is optional everywhere. Uh, we are going to use some name and we will select a suitable name based on the our problem. A meaningful uh, name to the structure should be selected. Okay, because the name will reflect the significance of that structure. Suitable names should be selected. And after the name, we are starting with a opening brace. The opening brace tells that the body of the structure is starting. The body of the structure. So all these uh, elements of the structure are defined inside the opening brace and the closing brace of the structure. And uh, structure definition always terminates with a semicolon. So a closing brace followed by a semicolon. Structure definition, structure body opens with a opening brace and closes with a closing brace followed by a semicolon. So inside this opening brace and closing brace, we are having the elements of the structure. So the format for defining structure elements are like this. First, we will write in the data type of that variable and then variable name. And then if you have another variable, then the data type of that second variable and that second variable name. And then if you are having third variable, the data type of third variable and that third variable name. So data type of the fourth variable and fourth variable name like that you can give uh, any number of variables as a part of the structure definition. Okay. And so all these structure, uh, whatever variables you are defining inside this uh, structure, variable 1, variable 2, variable 3. So all these variables are called member fields of the structure. Members of the structures are member fields of the structure. Okay. So that you have to remember. And every variable must be defined individually inside the structure. So that is also most important. Every variable must be defined independently inside the structure. Okay. So now, <coughs> see, the combined declaration like int a comma b is not allowed inside the structure. So it should, it should be defined like this. Int a separately and variable b should also be declared separately. Int b int a separately we have defined int b the combined definition because you may feel that both a and b are integer data types so therefore i would like to define in one statement no inside the structure it is not valid so you have to you have to declare each variable individually so int a is to be defined separately int b is to be defined separately this is right and i have given this uh, some of the important points which I have just discussed with you about the structures. So that is you can for uh, uh, you are uh, to note down I have written all this. Struct is a keyword. Struct is a keyword followed by a tag name. So that tag name is called structure name. And then structure name means tag name can be selected as per the user's wish. But already I told you that identifiers, rules are to be followed for naming the structure. And structure name means tag name is used to declare the structure variables. So already we discussed about this. And the variables defined inside the bracket, brackets of the structure are called member fields of the structure. So each member field must be defined individually. That you have to remember. And see, 
every variable declaration terminates with a semicolon see here every variable name after variable name one you are having semicolon after variable name two you are having semicolon after variable name three you are having semicolon and this uh, we have followed this syntax for defining uh, book structure previously i will show that so see here we have defined struct book first data type is character first variable name is title it is array of character and second variable is again character variable and variable name is author it is a array of characters it has capacity to store 20 characters and then third variable is integer and variable name is pages and fourth variable is data type is float and its variable name is price so it is a book and it has started with a uh, c keyword struct and followed by a tag name and that tag name is book okay so the book is the uh, name of the structure so it is called book structure so book structure contains four variables inside it so title author pages and prices and you, we have to remember that the title author pages prices so these are the member fields so these member fields means these member fields individually they do not have any significance okay and it is simply a definition of the structure definition means just it is giving information about the format of our structure to the compiler so when you are defining a structure no memory is allocated to the structure variables no memory is created in the computer main memory for the structure it is only a just a format it is just like before you are going to construct your house what do you do is we will plan for our house construction means where we would like to have our uh, hall where we would like to have our kitchen where we would like to have our uh, children's bedroom master bedroom mm, dining room and study room all that we will plan it on a paper okay so we are driving so means it is just a plan it doesn't create any memory space in the computer memory it is just a format that we are informing to the compiler a book structure means it is having all these fields okay and then a student structure means it is having these fields so like that we are informing the compiler so now here see the examples i have given struct book just now we have discussed and example two you can see here so it is a student structure student structure already the fields attributes of the student structure we have already discussed hall ticket number it is integer value and then name of the student it is character data type and then marks it is also character data type uh, sorry integer data type and then percentage of the uh, student it is a real value so therefore we have declared it as a float even if you want you can declare it as a double data type there is no problem so like this similarly you can define a structure for employee you can define a, define a structure for item in a supermarket so with the different attributes based on the problem that you are uh, going to solve as yes, you can define now so this is the now we have some idea about how to define a structure mm, how to identify the format for the structure and uh, how to uh, define that structure defining structure means informing about the format of the structure to the compiler so for that what syntax we have to follow in c language so now we are having idea so these are the two examples one is book example another one is student structure example so these are the member fields we have selected four member fields for student and four member fields for book and you can have uh, means four is not the limitation you can have any number of attributes inside the student structure any number of variables you can define based on the problem that you are having in your hand similarly here book structure is having four attributes we have taken if you want you can take more number of variables inside the book structure so all these variables are called member fields of book structure and these variables are called member fields of the student structure and these member fields individually they do not have any significance these member fields individually they do not have any significance okay that you have to remember and now so this is the format for defining the structure this is syntax we are following but where this uh, structure definition is to be given so already in the differences when we have discussed about arrays and uh, structure structures differences so there we have discussed 
that structures usually the structure definition is already always given in the global declaration section that is means before the main function so this is what i would like to tell so location of structure definition in a c program where you would like to uh, define that structure so here where you would like to define that structure so structure definition can be given inside the main function or it can be given outside the main function but in most cases the structure definition is given outside the main function means outside the main means not after the main it should be given before the main before the main means it is called global declaration section so in most of the c programs structure definitions are defined outside the main function outside the main function means just before you are going to start the main function before that main function we are giving the structure definition so that uh, uh, area before the main function it is called global declaration section not only structure definition any global variables that you want to you would like to use in your c program so all that global variables you can define so in this global declaration section so now we will go for the second step of implementing or developing structures okay so here i have given example location of defining a structure see every program you know uh, here uh, it should start with a documentation section means the documentation section means comment line so the comment line uh, tells about the purpose of that program and the author who is writing on which date that program is written and for what purpose that program is written and where that program can be used all that details are usually mentioned at the beginning of the program means before this include statement here we are going to write that is called a documentation section then hash include stdio.h so it is called a linking section so here we are going to mention the uh, list of libraries so whose functions are to be added to our program so and then after this uh, include include statements are called a linking section so once this linking section is over so then we are going to have definition section so means if you are using any macro variables so we will define them after this include statements so hash define we will write like that okay so here since we are not uh, defining any macro variables so therefore we are not uh, we have not mentioned any definition okay so and then after the definition section we are having global variable section declaration section that is just before main function so this is here we have defined our here we have defined our structure so here our structure is having four member fields as we have discussed that is a book structure and it is having four member fields okay so title author pages place so structure definition has started with the keyword struct followed by a structure tag that is called structure tag means structure name book and with the opening brace and closed with a closing brace followed by a semicolon and then main program so main program and then statements of the main program return zero and then closing brace of the main program okay so this is how we have defined the structure so like that you can write before the main function inside the main function also you can define but uh, we do not uh, use structure definitions inside the main function it is not wrong but when you are declaring in, when you are going with the structures so usually structures are always declared in the global declaration section so before the main function so this section is called complete this section is called global declaration section where we are defining the structure format definition okay so this definition we have to remember that when you are defining a structure means no memory space is allotted to this structure in the computer main memory only it is the information given to the compiler means book structure means it is having these member fields okay means four variables are there inside the book structure so that is the information you are giving no space no memory space is created to the uh, structure book in the computer main memory that we have to remember then we will go for the second step after defining the section just now whatever i told i wrote here okay so that you can note down in your notebook structure definition gives information to the compiler about the structure and its member fields definition does not create or allocate any memory in the computer main memory for the structure that you have to carefully remember 
Many people remember that once the definition for the structure is given, immediately space is allotted in the computer main memory. It is wrong concept. Okay, definition means just giving information to the compiler about the format of your structure. So, compiler does not allocate any memory. So, memory is allocated only when you create variables, when you declare the variables of the structure. So that is the second step. So till now we have discussed only the first step. First defining the structure and then declaring the structure variable. So we are now going with the second step. Okay. So declaration of structure variables. Okay. So how do we declare the structure variables? So to declare the structure variables, we are having a specific format. Okay. S specific syntax we have to follow. In our program, we have to follow this. So, uh, declaration is uh, having a uh, syntax like this. Struct. Struct is the keyword followed by structure name. What is the name of your structure? And then variable names. V1. If you, are, uh, if you wanted to define more than one structure variable, then all the structure variables should be separated by comma. Like this. V1, comma, V2, and, and so on. Finally, Vn. So, n structure variables will. We have defined v1, v2, v3, v4 up to and uh, so on vn. So all this v1 to vn are the structure variables of type struct name. Structure variables of type structure name. So example struct book bk1. BK1. Now bk1 is a variable. bk1 is a structure variable. Which type of structure variable it is? It is a structure variable of type structure book. Structure book. So means bk1 is a structure variable. bk1 is a structure variable. bk1 is a structure variable. So when this variable is created, see for uh, creating this, uh, declaring this bk1 structure variable, we have followed the syntax. Struct, struct is the keyword followed by the structure name. So the structure name is book. Previously we have declared this structure variable. See structure struct book. So that is the structure name. Struct book. Entire this line we are using for declaring the structure variables here. So struct book bk1. Now bk1 is the structure variables of type structure book. Of type structure book. So now once you create this for bk1 memory space is allocated in the computer main memory to the bk1 variable space is allotted in the computer main memory with the bk1 bk1 is since it is a book structure book structure means it is having four member fields title author page and price title is array of characters so we have declared book with a capacity of 20 characters title is having 20 characters capacity to store. Each character sto uh, occupies one byte of computer memory. So therefore, total 20 characters space means 20 bytes of memory is allocated. Similarly, author. Inside the book structure, author, you have defined it as array of characters with a capacity of 20 characters. So therefore, 20 characters. Each character occupies one byte space. 20 characters means 20 bytes space. So in the name of author, so 20 bytes space is reserved. And pages. Pages is defined inside the book structure as integer. Integer means it occupies two bytes and a 16-bit mission. So by default already we discussed so many number of times that we will take by default a 16-bit mission. Integer means 16-bit mission. And 16-bit mission it occupies two bytes of space. Okay and then price is defined as a float. Float occupies four bytes of space. Only integer variable size is depend on, dependent on the computer and all other data types they are independent of the computer independent of the machine okay only integer size depends on the machine for 16 bit machine integer and a 16 bit machine integer occupies 2 bytes and a 32 bit machine integer occupies 4 bytes space and a 64 bit machine integer occupies 8 bytes space so by default when the machine is not mentioned computer machine is not mentioned whether it is 16 bit type or a 32 bit type or 64 bit type by default we will take it as a 16 bit type machine so therefore only 2 bytes of space is allotted so this is like uh, this is the uh, syntax for declaring the structure variable. 
So once you declare the such variables like this, then only the memory is allocated to BK. BK1. So like this, you can declare any number of variable. You can write struct book, struct book BK1, comma BK2, comma BK3 like that. So BK1, BK2, BK3 are three structure variables. So already I told you structure variables are called objects. So structure variables can be declared inside or outside the function. But mostly we will define them inside the function. So structure variables are always declared inside, uh, inside the function. You can declare outside also but usually the structure variables are declared inside the functions. Only definition of the structure is given outside of all the functions including the main function. So member fields does not have individual significance unless they are associated with structure variable. So already I told when we have discussed the format for the structure. So whatever variables are defined inside the structure they are called the member fields of the structure. So individually they do not have any significance unless they are associated with the structure variables. Means we have defined we have defined uh, book structure here. Suppose title individually simply if you say it, only title so title means what uh, whose title it is it doesn't have any significance so when you say that title of book one then it is having significance title of book two so what is the book two title so it is having similarly author author means individually simply if you say author so it doesn't have any significance but if you say author of this book one author of book two author of book three so means they must be linked. The structure variables must be linked with the structure name. Mm, structure name means structure variables. Then only these member fields are having significance. So how do we provide the link between this structure? How do we provide the link between the structure variables and the member fields of the structure? So that we are going to discuss. So here now we have discussed two, uh, three things till now. One is how to define the structure and then where to define that structure definition so inside the main function or outside the main function and then we have discussed how to declare the structure variables and now we are going to discuss how to access structure variables and how to initialize the member fields so the member fields can be linked with their structure variables using a dot operator so this dot operator means a dot full stop in normal English we will call it as a full stop so in C language it is called dot operator or it is also called period operator and more meaningfully it is called member access operator structure member access operator so the link between the member fields of the structure and the structure variable can be provided using a dot operator first we will write the syntax like this first structure variable name followed by a member field so book one we have declared as a structure variable book one is a structure variable of type book structure okay so inside the book structure you are having four member fields one is title another one is author another one is pages and another one is prizes the link between this member fields of the structure and the structure variable is provided using a dot operator so now book one dot title so book one is a structure variable book one inside that book one you are having four member fields so this is a book one structure book one structure inside book one structure you are having four fields title author pages prizes okay so here the link between that book one structure variable and these four member fields are provided using a dot operator book one dot title okay book one dot title means it is significance that title of book one book one dot author author of book one pages in the book one price of the book one so like that it uh, we are providing the link between a structure variable and it's a member field so member fields simply by saying title you cannot access the member field okay if you wanted to say title it should be preceded with a dot preceded with a, its a structure variable name so that is how you can access the member fields of the structure and once you can access these member fields, you can assign the values to the member fields like the normal variables. Again, here the same procedure we will follow for assigning, initializing the member fields. The 
same procedure is if you wanted to assign values to the member fields uh, since if it is an array of characters you can use a string handling function string copy function here title is a array of characters so therefore here we are storing a string we are copying a string uh, that string name is c programming it is the title of the book we are copying into the title member field of the book one similarly we are using string copy function to copy the author name balaguru swami into a member field uh, member field called author into the book one structure variable so book one dot author contains balaguru swami book one dot title contains c program and then book one dot pages so pages is an integer variable we are assigning uh, 256 means 256 pages are there in that uh, book one so what is that book one name it is book one name is c programming author is balaguru swami and what is its price its price is 273 rupees 50 pies okay it is a it is defined as a float variable so book one dot price price is float variable so like that we have assigned the values to that. but uh, there are different methods as we have discussed in uh, arrays and strings so values can be assigned to the member fields of the structure yes two methods are there for us so one is you can go with the static initialization and another one is you can go with the dynamic initialization so static initialization normally we do not prefer only the beginners when they are writing the program they go with the static initialization but uh, all real time applications will go with a dynamic initialization in real time applications so you have to concentrate on dynamic initialization rather than learning static initialization but here we will discuss what is that static initialization so static initialization means assigning the values to the member fields at the time of writing the program when you are writing the program itself you are assigning if you are assigning the values to the member fields of the structure then it is called static initialization so you, the programmer when they are writing the program at that time they are assigning the values to the member fields of the structure means the program is programmer who is writing the program is aware of what values are being assigned to the members of the structure so that is known to the programmer at the time of writing the program itself means before the uh, program is going to be compiled the programmer is aware of the values assigned to the members of the structure so that is called static initialization static initialization means assigning a values to the member fields at the time of writing the program and after assigning the values and completing the after completing your program when you submit your program to the compiler the compiler will look into the member fields and their values means the compiler is also coming to know the values assigned to the member fields at the time of compilation itself so therefore this way of assigning values to the member fields of the structure is also called static initialization static initialization so static initialization or compile time initialization it is also called compile time because the compiler is coming to know so the values assigned to the members of the structure so it can be called with two different names static initialization or compile time initialization okay so a best example for static initialization is like this this is one way of assigning the values to the member fields of the structure already we have discussed we have defined struct book book one already book structure definition is already given okay so after defining that we are creating a structure variable this is called a declaration so book one variable bk1 is a structure variable which is of type book structure so we have created bk1 structure variable then bk1 structure variable contains title author and then pages and price okay so for all this since title and author are string title and author are string uh, variables so we are using string handling function string copy using string copy we are copying the values into the title and the author and then pages is an integer variable so we are assigning values directly to the uh, pages integer variable and then price price uh, is a float variable float to the float variable directly we are assigning the value using the assignment operator this is one method of uh, static initialization other method is also there okay so here where uh, bk1 is a structure variable of type structure book so variable is structure variable is declared separately 
and member fields are assigned value separately means here assignment is done separately and the declaration of such a variable is done separately so we can combine them declaration and assignment can be done at the same time so if the um, declaration and uh, declaration and uh, uh, assignment is done at the same time it is called initialization see here how we have assigned so here we have declared struct book bk1 bk1 is a structure variable equal to, at the same time we have assigned value values so in book structure what is the first member field we are having that is the title of the book see it is enclosed inside the double quotes and what is the second member field in the book structure it is the author name balaguru swan so it is a second member field second member field we have assigned and then what is the third member field in the book structure that is pages so 256 pages we have assigned and what is the fourth member field in the book structure that is price so price is assigned 273 rupees 50 pies so means in whatever order the member fields in the structure are defined in the same order values must be assigned to the member fields of the structure so like this in the same order with the same data types you have to assign the values if the order is not followed or if the data types are not matched so automatically compiler will generate an error and your program will not be executed once you compile your program compiler will show an error so that's what here i wrote here during the static initialization the order of the values this order of the values must match with the order of the member fields defined in the structure so like that you have to define and here we have a structure book structure contains four member fields for uh, four member fields we have given the values four values partial initialization is also permitted partial initialization means if a structure contains 10 variables you can assign values to only three or four variables and six variables uh, cannot be assigned any values you can leave the six variables just like that without assigning any values but here there is a condition how do you leave uh, few member fields in the structure without assigning a value all unassigned unassigned members must be left only at the end of the structure okay means if you wanted to leave any uh, member fields without assigning any values the unassigned member fields must be left only at the end not in the middle okay so struct book one here c program first two fields we have assigned values we have not assigned any value to the pages and prices pages and prices are last two members for last two members we did not assign but first two members we have assigned values okay so this is so here member fields pages and prices are not assigned any value that you have to remember like this you can assign the values so first method is like this declaration and assignment separately we did and then here declaration and assignment both are done at the same time so both ways you can use okay next this is about the static initialization static initialization means assigning a values to the members of the structure at the time of writing the program so that is called static initialization already we have discussed all these concepts in arrays and strings same concepts we are repeating yes we have already whatever concepts we have discussed three steps declaration and uh, uh, initialization and manipulating so same thing we are defined okay so here also declaration of structure variables and then initialization of structure variables and manipulating the structure variable here only one extra thing at the beginning is only definition of the structure that we, have, we are doing and all uh, other things are very similar to arrays and strings so now the dynamic initialization dynamic initialization means assigning the values to the member fields of the structure at the time of executing the program means uh, while writing the program the user is not assigning values to the member fields of the structure in the program so therefore programmer is not aware of what values are going to be assigned to these member fields similarly when you uh, submit your program to the compiler compiler does not know because you have not assigned any values to the member fields compiler also doesn't know what values you have assigned to the members fields of the structure so therefore these member fields will get the values from the user at the time of running your program at the time of executing your program so therefore it is called dynamic initialization dynamic means the values to the member fields are assigned at the time of running your program 
okay so means the values assignment is postponed till the execution of your program so this way of assigning the values to the member fields is called dynamic initialization so dynamic initialization is also called execution time initialization why it is called execution time initialization means at the time of executing program you are assigning the values to the member fields of the structure so because of that reason it is also called execution time initialization it is also called runtime initialization why when you are running your program so you are assigning the values to the member fields of the structure so therefore it is also called runtime initialization so to assign the values to the member fields at the runtime normally we will take the values from the user using input functions like uh, scanf function you can use or other input functions already we have discussed get char function you can use or you can use get s function you can use okay or uh, string handling functions you can use okay and then using them you can assign values to the member fields of the structure okay so not only scanf function you can use other input functions which we have discussed those function here i have taken an example of scanf because scanf is a formatted input output input function so you can using scanf function any type of value can be read you can read integer values you can read float values you can read uh, double values long double values character values okay so means it is a universal function so scanf function can be used to read any kind of values from the user and those values can be assigned to the member of the structure so here how we can use this structure as yes, that we are uh, i have given here see here scan of title is a array of character array of character means string so we are reading string value from scan of function is used for reading uh, input values from the user so percentage means you are instructing the uh, computer to read a string and that string should be stored in the title similarly another string you are reading and storing in the author and scan if here percent d means percentile d means you are instructing the computer to read a decimal integer value and store it in pages and percent f means you are instructing the computer to read a float value means real value and that real value you are instructing the computer to store inside the member field price okay so like that you can read okay this is the um, another way of dynamic initialization okay so we have now we have learned how to define a structure and where to define that structure and then how to declare the structure variables and where to declare the structure variables in the program and then how to access the member fields of the structure and how to assign the values to the member fields using static initialization method using dynamic initialization once the values to the member fields are assigned so then you can manipulate the member fields so the manipulation means you using them to perform the operations on the member fields so all arithmetic operations you can perform once the member fields are assigned values so that's what we are we have written this is the the final step so manipulating the member fields how do you manipulate so once the member fields are assigned the values they can be used just like normal value so pages if you wanted to increase the pages value so bk1 pages the old value of the pages is equal to new value of the pages is equal to old value of the pages plus 20 so new value stored in the pages old value is overwritten next new price is equal to old price is of book 1 plus 55 rupees so that is the new book whatever existing price is there for that you are adding 55 rupees more okay so the pages value is increased by 20 and the price value of the book is increased by 55 so that is called manipulation so varieties of operations you can perform on the member fields of the structure so once that now finally we will write a program using this structure so i will show the program for uh, book structure we will read the values uh, for the attributes of the book structure and then we will store these uh, values given by the user into the book structure and then we will display the details of that book on the screen to the user so here is the program write a program by defining a structure called book with the member fields in the structure as title author pages and price and read the values from the user and display these values details of the book on the screen okay so this program similar way you can write the program for student structure 
you can write the program for employee structure i have shown similarly you can write the program for item in a supermarket the program is like this just to see the program so program always starts with the definition section definition sec uh, documentation section documentation section means a comment line so it is telling the purpose of your program here you can also write inside the comments the author name who is writing this program here i did not write my name okay so it defines a structure book reads the values from the user and displays those values on the screen okay so this is the purpose of this program so include stdio.h so this is the linking chart. this is the documentation section this is linking section after that you are having definition section but we are not uh, having any variables to define so here and uh, definition section is followed by a global variable declaration section so in the global variable declaration section we are defining the function means before the main function so struct book with all these member fields already we have discussed discussed we have mentioned so structure definition starts with a keyword struct followed by a structure name book and of opening brace and ends with a closing brace followed by a semicolon then main function so before the main function we have defined structure definition structure definition does not create any memory that we have to remember and then inside the main function is yes, we have created the structure variable so the name of the structure variable is bk1 so bk1 is the name of the structure variable okay so reading values from the user you are asking using printf statement it is a universal printf statement enter the title of the book you are asking user user enters some name after seeing this statement so that string you are reading and you are instructing the computer to store inside the title similarly you can ask the user to enter the author of the book okay so scan if it reads the string entered by the user and stores in author of the bk1 variable and then you are asking the user to enter number of pages in the book so number of pages is integer you are instructing the computer to read a decimal integer percent d percentile d means decimal integer value and it is to you are instructing the computer to store inside pages and then you are asking the computer to enter the price of the book so user is entering the price of the book it is a real value so therefore float you are reading and are instructing the computer to store inside the price member field of the book one structure bk1 structure so now after storing uh, reading the values and storing inside the member fields of the structure then your task is to display all these values on the screen so this is the second see when you are writing a program the lines should come on the same line like this we have discussed and many students are not writing the program this structure the opening brace and the closing brace must face each other and after opening brace all lines which you are writing all that must be given four characters space and they should be written and all these lines should come on the same line similarly here main function also so opening brace after the opening brace all lines should be written after by giving four character space this is called indentation many times i am we are discussing in the class but you people are not following when you are doing programs in the laboratory okay so this is the uh, this is called indentation a good programmer should always follow the indentation so when you follow indentation it, it is easy for the others to understand your program and it is also easy for you to follow your program you have to remember that indentation is not mandatory but it is required to understand the program easily okay so here you are displaying the details so details of the book you are displaying the message on the screen and then title uh, that a title you are printing uh, in this percentage place by taking the value from the title bk1 dot title and here author author is printed as easily followed by a colon followed by a percentage percentage in that place whatever value stored in the author variable author member field variable it is printed here then printf number of pages number of pages as easily it is printed this text followed by percentage d percentage d means decimal integer you are instructing the computer to print a decimal integer value in this place which decimal integer value the decimal integer value stored in the bk1 dot books that is printed here then finally the price of the book so point to so means after the decimal point two decimal digits you are instructing the computer to print so bk1 dot price whatever value is stored in the price member field variable that is printed here then return zero program is terminated closing brace end of the main function this is how you can write and this is about the introduction of the structure 
and how these structure variables are used to handle complex data items means the items which are having attributes which are of different data types and all all of them how they can be grouped into one unit and how they can be managed handled in the program to perform the operations to solve the computational problems this is how similarly same program you can write for student for storing student details you can read the you can define your structure for student for uh, uh, storing his details and uh, take the data from the user store that data in the member fields of student structure and uh, display them on the screen similarly you can write the program for employee structure so with a suitable attributes for employee you can take you can create a uh, employee structure and then you can read the values from the user store those values in the member fields of the employee structure and then display all that member fields details on the screen to the user and then similarly you can write for an item available in the supermarket item is having certain attributes like uh, item code and item name and then item price and how much quantity is available so some items are counted uh, using integers their quantity and some items uh, quantities counted using weights okay 1 kg 2 kg 3 kg how much quantity it is available so like that you can take the suitable parameters you can create create a structured definition for it and then take the values from the user store that values in the member fields of the item structure and then you can display the details on the screen in the same way you can follow so if you have any doubts in this presentation you can contact me on this number between 9:30 and file daily okay so i do not have any hesitation you need not have any hesitation to yourself so i am ready to help you okay if you have any doubts you can uh, contact me there is no problem so thank you for your patience listening okay so thank you all thank you bye